Welcome to Chewing the Curve with Mike Benyon Rowe and Lee Robertson. And following on from being named Pajazzler of the Year, I wanted to set my sights a little higher on a Jazzler. And that's why you stick rhinestones on you. Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud, your weekly LGBTQI plus chat show where I look at some news stories that you may have missed from the world and bring us a whistle-stop tour of the world of celebrity. It's Lee. So, what have you got for us this week, Lee? Well, this week I have a very gay story about a dating app that is now a musical. And I also have some wonderful gluey and sticky things in Crafty Queens. <laughs> That's exciting. And we even have a game that you can join along with too. But on screen now you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, the Cud.tv for our website, and to catch up on YouTube or podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as people who have popped up on our comments go scrolling along the bottom of the screen, it's time to go over to Mike and the Buzz. Now, pregnancy. I just had a big dinner. That's <laughs> Do you need to go and pop? Yeah. Food baby. Food baby. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, not a subject we've often covered. Pregnancy. No. No? But I thought it was about time I, I shared a miracle birth with you. Just really? Mm. Has he come again? Possibly. But maybe in crocodile form. Oh. Right. As a crocodile has... <laughs> so now yeah. I'm imagining yeah. Jesus... As a crocodile. As a crocodile in, like, the white dress. Yeah. Yeah, and the sandals. Yeah. And the long hair. And the snappy snap snap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, well, uh, this is a story about a, a crocodile who's basically impregnated themselves and given birth to babies. OK. So, yeah, um, found to have made herself pregnant. Now, the theory is, is because um, it's dinosaurs may have been able to reproduce asexually. OK. And, of course, crocodiles are the closest thing we have to dinosaurs. And so... That's they think is how it's happened, but has managed to reproduce on their own. Or mm -hmm. she's been to the um, crocodile um, sperm bank and um, signed up for some of the finest reptile jizz around. <laughs> and a big turkey baster. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, how would they get the turkey? Because they've got very little arms. Logistically, they'd need a friend to help. Yeah, they would probably get like a gazelle. Get a girl round. Get one of the girls round, a couple of bottles of Prosecco. Do it and then eat them. Like, <laughs> it's not the head up. Um, is, this, is, this, is, this, is this a worrying thing if well, they can do it's, that? It's not really a worrying thing, it's just news. You know, Does it mean that Jurassic Park is a reality? Yes, that's exactly what it means. Right. So, there's lots of theories about how it could have possibly happened to you. Know, and I just personally think one of her crocodile friends get, oh, go and f yourself. And she or did. Or did the. Back to front wipe. Back to front wipe? You know, after they've had a little bit of jiggy jiggy. Not virgin crocodile. Oh, no okay. jiggy jiggy has been had. It's a virgin crocodile. Virgin crocodile. How did they how did they find this out? Did was it did it come up to them and tell them? Or does it well how did they know it? Does it how did they it, know what? That it had given birth or No, how, how did they know that it was, just, what, two was different it, questions. Was it in <laughs> captivity? Was it a wild yes. one? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not it's not out <laughs> going, yeah, love, look what I've just done. Well, yeah. Look at me clutch. <laughs> That's what they call a collection of... Uh, yes, yeah, I got yeah. that. Not a small handbag. <laughs> yeah. um, although that would make a lovely handbag. Um, like a lot of handbags. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. It's just the, it's the start of the end of days, isn't it? <laughs> the start of the end of days. It is, yeah. yeah. That and AI. Or the end of the start of days, because it said dinosaurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a different way of looking at it. Mm. How many babies did you have? Don't know that, do you? No, I don't, I don't just have a exact few. Number. A couple. Couple, because yeah, they, they lay eggs, don't they? And they do, yes. They come out going, ah, ah. yes, and they they carry them around in their mouths. Uh huh. But they don't eat them. They don't eat them, but unless they're really hungry. <laughs> well, there was that one time I woke up like you wake up and you're like, yeah, something in your mouth. Yeah, mm, it's a crocodile baby. <laughs> That's not what my ex called it. No. Anyway, um, let's move on, shall we? Mm, please. When you nip to the little boy's room. <laughs> when I was five. <laughs> okay, when you go and drop the kids off at the pool. Yes. When you go for a poop de boop. What is it you call it a poop de doop? Poopy doop. Poopy doop. Mm. Okay. Um, toilet paper. Yes. Yeah, has quite a big environmental impact. 
People Does... think it's a tree that they're about to chop down. Yeah, they both say use as well. So <laughs> wrap it round and round and round. <laughs> you just like <laughs> whole roll around the hand. And... <laughs> you just take the tube out the middle and put your yeah, hand. just stick it up. Yeah, yeah, stick it up. <laughs> yeah, like to be clean. <laughs> anyway, um, obviously it's it's not that environmentally friendly. Okay. Okay. Um, so one gentleman in America had to be America has switched to a natural alternative. Baby crocodiles. Baby crocodiles. Yes, how did you know? Um, no, <laughs> not baby crocodiles. Um, leaves. OK. So he, he's growing a, a specific plant to use the leaves because they're quite large and quite soft on his okay. his, his chocolate starfish. Oh, oh, right, OK. Is it a dock leaf? It's not a dock leaf, no. So he uses the blue spur leaf. OK. OK, which he said is the perfect size for wiping. Your bum. Yeah. Um, it's 36 from Colorado in the US. He's 36. He's 36. Okay. Yeah. And he abandoned toilet paper in 2013. Just left it alone one night. Just, yeah. Used it Just up. Just left. Right. Then decided to go through any tissues okay. and napkins that he had. Nice. Bit and then hard. reached for a leaf. Oh, well, like you do. Yes, you do, because, you know. I just use the curtains. <laughs> do you? <laughs> I've got a bee day. I can see you having a bee day. I don't understand the bee day. You don't understand the bee day. I don't. I don't feel that it does. Get, does what it's supposed to. Because it it it's supposed to be the alternative to the toilet roll, isn't it? It's sticky for your wash. But it never does. It never gets the whole bottom clean. You still have to dab yourself dry. You, you don't just dry get... yourself. No, you have to dry or oh, shake off if you're clever. Yeah. yeah. I can sneeze off, but yeah. Okay. That's a whole different thing. And um, if you can do interesting things with your bottom, you can or should share them with us. We are at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us to our story of the week. This is a story about a town in England. Mm. OK, because they sometimes have interesting names. Mm. Like it's Cockend mm. right, and Bellend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All places you've visited. <laughs> places I frequent quite often. You are the mayor of them. Oh. <laughs> I've got the keys. <laughs> um, uh, um, but this is a specific place that's come out with a warning. OK? As a councillor's had to warn people about a uh, scum. Uh, uh, it's around... no way to refer to its residents. No, no, the, no actual physical. Physical scum. scum. Scum that they're scum. unsure of where it's, where it's come from. Do you? Do you? Scum. OK, that's what I keep saying. <laughs> Was there a film called Scum? I don't know. Set in a prison. Dean will know that. In the gallery. There was, yes, there was, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, shout is yes in our ears. Okay, great. So this is a town called Twat. Okay. Um, who have warned about people saying there's a lot of scum around Twat and they need to be careful. Scummy Twat. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a blue green algae mm. that has arrived in a pond. And okay. Has, because of the recent lovely weather. Mm. There's been an explosion. There's of lots scum. of scum. Yes, everywhere. So it's this, this algae. Yes. Yeah. Um, that has come near this town with the. I don't want to say name. the word. I don't want to say that word again. Um, do you think it's pronounced how we pronounce it, or do you think it's got an alternative pronunciation? Well, like thwait. Yeah, or thwiat. Thwiat. <laughs> Is it in Wales? Perhaps. It's not. No. 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 Thwait. What? Thwait. Thwait. <laughs> that just sounds worse. <laughs> The ones, the tweet, the tweet. Sweden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could be Thwait. Yeah, it's Twat, in it? Possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever had any scum found by your local area? Are you going to say something else? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. The the local the local docklands near to where I live um, regularly posts. Please do not please do not come near us because of the green algae that forms upon the water, and it's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Reaches out, grabs small children, sucks them in, <laughs> dissolves them. I love how careful you were then. What? Not to say something very very rude. I have to say things very carefully all the time. <laughs> so, yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so people are being warned that if you are out and about and you spot this green blue algae, don't go near it. Don't go near it. Leave it be. Leave it be. Leave let it, it be. Let it live its life. Yeah, let it do its thing. Yeah. Um, and that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you for that, Mike. I, I too want just to be left alone. And, um, yeah, as you are. A pleasure as always. But coming after this short break, Lee brings us a look at some celebrity news in the showbiz. Stick around.
You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get to the showbiz with Lee. <laughs> You enjoy the apps, don't you, Mike? I have several networking applications. Some, some yeah. dating sites. No, no, I just call them networking. Networking. Some of them are not for dating. Okay, well, some how... of them are just for bum chicka wow wow. Bum chicka wow wow wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. How how would you feel about going to see Grinder the Opera? Um, am I starring in it? No. I should be obsessingly sending the word hi to someone. Hi, hi. how are you? Hi. Um, no, I don't think no. you are in it, but you, okay. you, they might. I might be. Because, because that, that, this is a thing. Grind of the okay. musical, right, Grind of the opera. Oh, God, opera. This, this is, this is the, the, oh, it's highbrow, it's an opera. It's an opera, yeah. Oh. Apparently, the review is, uh, Grind of the opera is a f***ing good night out. Oh. That's that's the official review. So it's um, <laughs> who, who wrote that review? Someone on Grind? Um, someone on Grind? Yeah. So it's a satirical take on everybody's favourite hookup. Not everybody's favourite hookup dating site. Some people's favourite. Yeah. So it, it's returning to London to Southwark Union Theatre, following an, an extended 2018 sold out run. Oh. I didn't even know it, it existed until this very very episode. Oh. Um, and it won the unauthorised, it's an unauthorised parody, and it won the oh. best musical at the Offy, which is the Off West End yeah. Awards, not your local Yeah, the, the stuff that's a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So the show, it follows um, four Grindr users, Jack, Don, Devon and Tom, as they engage in relatable and familiar conversations with one another. Um, on on Grinder and the kind of like the storylines all kind of collide together at the end. Okay. Um, now this this reviewer who a reviewed it probably a big orgy. Yeah. Um, this the, the guy that reviewed it said there isn't a bad performance to be found. Oh, that's good. Um, here, um, particularly his highlight was when one uh, the the character Jack, who's a twink, sings, "I want to be your cum dumpster." Um, yeah. Is is kind of a, a that's, that's actually off my album. Is, is that off your <laughs> album, um, or is it could be the title of your autobiography? That couldn't it? No, no, that no. Was, that, that's something very different. Is that very very different? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, we've we've got some pictures of it up now on the screen. Um, it's apparently a no holds barred examination of what the app is really like. Hang on a minute, they're all on laptops. I don't. Well, I don't know. So that means that they're paying for it. Do you pay for Grinder? If you want to use Grinder on the laptop, you have yes. to pay. Oh, okay. Pay for it. So rich. All... It's a lot of money. Oh, okay. it's, like, it's like thirty-five quid a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, Just to see giant dick pics, are they? Giant dick pics. Oh, well, well, bigger pics of dicks. Not giants. No, some of them are quite. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, apparently, it, although it's quite light-hearted, mm -hmm. it also like, draws attention to some of the negative and problematic issues that you can sort still of. find. Okay. So no fats and mask for mask, uh -huh. that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, it also in sort Can't of deal with the racism thing as well. Well, yeah, homophobia, shame, stigma, and sexual health. Uh, but it, the review is kind of something that doesn't feel like it's kind of like shoehorned in or we've got to talk about this we're going to yeah. talk about this um, and it, apparently it plays at the the opera the grand of the opera plays at the union theater until the end of july oh in the london in that there london in that there london so you pop along so there if you want to be see. quick if you want to see it i don't know if you're allowed to be on grinder while you're watching grinder the i think opera. it'd probably be encouraged <laughs> well then it's basically just have the, the noise and see how many people go oh okay <laughs> see see yeah that's what people do don't they and they go places, they like click on how many people are on Grinder where they are. I, I've seen people use it to flirt with, and it, it kind of upsets me a bit. Because you see people walk into a bar, you know, on a night out with the lads, mm. and go, oh, he's on Grinder. Hi. And then you see the other person go, hey, hi. It's like, mm. go over and speak Just to him. Just talk to each other. Just go over and go, fancy a quickie. Oh, and then stick the thumb up your ass. <sighs> okay, let's move on to something a little bit more. See me on a night out. <laughs> <laughs> smidge highbrow. Uh, I didn't know this existed. It's been on streaming for quite a while. Okay. But it's very, it's very good. So Alan Carr has has written a sitcom. Okay. Um, so it's it's a it's a sitcom loosely based on his life growing up as the son of a football manager in Northampton in the 1980s. It's called Changing Ends. Um, mm -hmm. we've, got a, we've, got a, we've got a picture of the... So that, obviously that's the real Alan, okay. and that's the actor that is playing Alan as a child. That's, that's good casting, that. It's good casting, isn't yeah. it? Um, so it's all about his life growing up in the 1980s when his dad 
um, Graham was manager of Northampton, 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 Northampton yeah. um, Town FC, and focuses on Alan kind of starting on his journey into the very masculine world of lower league football. So he's been very, <laughs> he's kind of covered this a lot in his, his stand up. How you know he came from his, his dad and his brother were very into football, very masculine, and then there's Alan Carr who clearly was never <laughs> into football. Um, so it's 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 very camp. Mm -hmm. Very camp. Um, as you'd expect from Alan Carr. It, as you would expect from Alan Carr. Um, there's stuff around him facing bullies in school. Mm -hmm. um, he it talks about his formative influence of his flamboyant new drama teacher, Miss Gideon, um, who introduces herself in the school canteen by crawling around like a cat and licking her bits. Didn't we all have a teacher like that? I was like, is that not off um, Big Brother? No, that George was Galloway. King. Oh, no, right. Oh, celebrity Big Brother. Yeah. Like me. To be, be the cat. Um, <laughs> it's like, no, George Galloway, yeah. no. Well, no. apparently, the, the Alan in this this sitcom, he loves yeah. the he loves her blouses, he loves her calf length boots. Um, she encourages him to be himself, and that uh, one day the bullies will who made his life a misery will be kind of asking him to be friends. Mm -hmm. um, it's really really sweet. Of course. It's a really nice thing to watch. Um, he, what what Graham said is like. Um, there's lots of sort of like specific details about his life in it, although it's not a biography of his life. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like, so there's plenty of knowing jokes, like when Graham the dad orders his on to take down the poster of Prince because he's not a real man. So then Alan replaces it with George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and that was fine. Yeah, um, fine. So that is, that is available now to stream oh, on ITVX. Nice. Good show. I shall mm -hmm. be, be streaming that this evening. Indeed. Do you have ITVX? Yes, because I, I, I signed up for it thinking it was Pornhub. Oh, OK. Before it became ITVX. No, was, no, no. no. I thought like ITVX. Oh, racy ITV. Like fighting. Oh, OK. And it wasn't. I was like, oh. Oh, OK. So they missold it to you. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, OK. Let down. Last bit of shiny... Sh her? Last bit of shiny news. Shiny news. Last bit of showbiz news. And who else but Kylie? Of course, because it wouldn't be a day without you. Without me talking Kylie. about Kylie Minogue. <laughs> so she's having it. She's having a. I mean, she never went away. No, she didn't. She was always around, but at the moment, she's having a bit of a renaissance with with with. I'd say a resurgence. A resurgence. Or a renaissance. Um, with with Padam Padam, which is an Edith Piaf cover. Is it, you say it's an Edith Piaf cover? Edith. Piaf. I don't. I said Edith Piaf cover, but Edith, Edith Piaf. Piaf cover. Yeah. Um. So she's so so it's like probably one of the most streamed singles that she's had in decades it's you know oh, we've yeah, got a picture of it here you're doing i should be so lucky they didn't really have streaming so no, but kind of like in the recent times when streaming was available okay. this is like gone ballistic she's like it's you know big in america it's big all over the world and everyone's doing the memes and the tiktoks and the mm -hmm. thing so it's ahead of her her album tension which is going to be released in the autumn so she's been doing like the rounds of of interviews and stuff and she was talking about how the lgbtq plus community um have sort of like paid for everything her, <laughs> in her life. <laughs> paid for everything <laughs> she's ever released um no she's kind of like she thinks she's got a really con she, she was on a, a Entertainment Tonight Canada, uh -huh. um, and she's been interviewed, and she was saying that they asked her about her, her her gay fans, and she said that she has a really natural connection with queer people and why the community has kind of adopted her. So she was kind of talking about how back in 1990, mm -hmm. she went to her um, first drag show that was the Night of a Thousand Kylies. So she kind of went to this drag show, <laughs> and she said... She said she loved it because at least I knew that I was the least Kylie in that room <laughs> of drag queens. Um, she's yeah. she's kind of also talking about how they've got a back and like even when there's like been the lean times when perhaps the albums have not sold as well as other ones. How was it Impossible Princess? Impossible Princess. I love that album though. I'm not so keen. Well, that, that's because you're not a true character. I'm not so keen. Um, and how she kind of like collaborates with like. L what? <laughs> How long did they get away with that one for? I, I did not hear you. What did you say? Because <laughs> you're not really a Kylie fan. Huh? I am a Kylie fan. Okay, but uh, that was that. That was the. Lead. If you if you ever met her, your indie. 
Kylie. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, well, yeah, but if you ever met Kylie, you wouldn't be like rude and ignore her, we don't, would you? We don't want to talk about that story. <laughs> that, is, that is the 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 biggest regret of my life. But we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do okay. it. Okay. Anyway, so she's she's been talking about how she collaborates a lot with with queer music stars like Jake Shears and Ali Alexander. Mm -hmm. She had this huge thing her and Danny at the beginning of the year where they were at World Pride yep. and Mardi Gras and got on stage and um, that's a lot of performed. Minogue. That is a lot. I mean, they're very small. I know, but still, that's because they're, they're, con they're like concentrated, like you know, concentrated little homosexual. You get a little, tired of things. Yes. a little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes, yeah. a little bit of camp, but you pop it in water and you get a lot. Get a lot of me know. Yeah. He says you kind of forget moments that weren't great, but then there was plenty of moments where I was just being absolutely. You know, amazing. She said, I feel like my gay audience felt some kind of solidarity. They protected me and I, I was trying to give out nothing but goodness. Um, amazing. And she, when, I mean, she's had a few boyfriends. Has, 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 well, she's getting on, isn't she? You know, don't you say that. How old, do you think, say, how old is she? She's 54. Getting on. It's not getting on. It's in prime of life. It is. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I'm not so right on the screen. <laughs> um, she, when she was going out with one of them, I can't remember what his name was, they got engaged and uh -huh. she said, We're not going to get married until gay marriage is legal in Australia. Yeah. And then she dumped him. Yeah. But, you know. Because Kayla, it's like, Oh, I was kind of putting him off. But... Mm, so, mm. Anyway, that's the end of this week's showbiz news. Mm. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that 55 is the prime of life. Means 54. Very... Huh? 54. 54, okay. So that makes you a chicken, doesn't it? Um, well, stick around, because coming up, we have a quiz for Lee in our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. And this week, we're going to play a game of Movie Moes. And this one is for the sequin specimen of splendour that is Lee. So off you pop to our special area so I can play with you. That's unusually nice of you. It's also not true because you're not sequined. Game of the Week. So what Lee's going to do is he's going to describe a movie to me and I have to guess where it is and you can play along as well. Are you ready, Lee? I am indeed. I'm in the cinema. It's very empty. The way you like it, though, isn't it? It is. Because then you can touch yourself Take without anyone off. shouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> exactly what I was saying. <laughs> and you went the same way. So yeah, do you want to crack one off then? Oh, well, I'll give you the selections first. Oh. So you can choose. There's, there's four choices. There's from another world. Ooh, science fictiony. Okay. There is not for kids. Oh. No. Remakes and reboots, or heartwarmers. Ah. Oh. I'm going to go for heartwarmers. Okay, so first heart one, warmers, heartwarmers. Yeah. Okay, there are three in this franchise. They are all about um, the singing of the ladies um, in a cappella um, formation, and they go to competitions and um, they they sing songs. And there's one called Cups where they go. Boo -dee, boo -dee, boo -dee, boo -dee. Uh, that's not how they sing it, but I can't remember. But I know it's called Cups. And, um, yeah, there's three of them, and um, they, one in they go to, to university, huh. and then the second one, I think they're still at university, and okay. then the third one, they're uh, not at university. <laughs> and um, there's a character called Fat Amy in it. Right, OK. It's that horrible one that I don't like, isn't it? I don't know what you like and what you don't like, mate. Oh, it's, oh, it's controversial I don't like it, and I'm aware of that, but it's that... Some people say that when you sing, you are, your voice sounds this thing. Me? No, not you, but like right. in general people. Ooh, that was, mm, mm. Pitch perfect. Yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah, I just, I really don't like those movies. Why, mate? What's the matter with you? It's a bit, nah. Don't you not like heartwarming, lovely songs? I like a heartwarming, lovely song. And I like the bit where she throws up singing. Because mm. that's always fun to see. Um, but... No, okay. Yeah. All right, what would you like next? From Another World, Not For Kids, or Remakes and Reboots? Let's do some porn, so not for kids. Hmm, your namesake. Yeah. I think there's two of these, and then there's also a stage show. Um, gentlemen who frequent the gymnasium uh, and also like to dance. Ah, uh, it's the documentary, isn't it? Mm. It's the story of my life. Is it? Magic Mike. It is, but, but it's not about. My body's ripped. Is it? Ripped in two, ripped in half. 
I don't want to say. Okay. Um, covered by a lot of flat, that's all. Flat? Flat. Flat. Flabby fat. Oh, okay. Right. Flat. Right. Well, well done you. Yes. Um, so, so now we, we you can choose from from another world or remakes and reboots. I'm going for a remake or reboot. Please. Oh, okay. So this wasn't originally a movie. It was a TV show back in Alf. the no back in the 90s where people Bobby would Bruce. run in slow motion along the beach in red swimming costumes with um, with the man from... Um, Del Monte. <laughs> from um, Knight Rider in it. Um, and um, very, 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 very popular. And so they made a film of it a couple of years ago um, with, um, with The Rock, um, Dwayne Johnson. Okay. And um, Handsome Squidward. Um, oh, oh, um, that's Zac Efron, so that would be Baywatch. It was indeed. I came so much watching that film. I was about to say, crap one off over there. One. One? One? Oh. It's, it's an hour and a half long. Wow. Very sore arm. Oh, I can imagine. A very, very, oh. very sore penis at the end. Oh, I had, there was a lot of chafing. You did put ice, a lot of ice on it. I had to sit in an ice bath. It was the only way to get around it. Oh, my goodness. Um, so let's close that door and go on to... Um, <laughs> no, let's leave it wide open so everyone can see. <laughs> from Another World, because that's the only choice. Oh, okay. this so this, you probably like these films. There's a number of them. They're superheroes. Gets very confusing because in one bit they all die, but then they don't, they come back again. <laughs> Gets confusing for you. Yeah. There's a lot of them in. I want to say, I want to say the Hulk. I want to say... I want to say the whole the, the whole. The I want to say the. Guy. Is it the Avengers movie? It is. You know your films, Mike. I, I know. I'm impressed with myself. So we, it's reset again. So Ooh, now you can exciting. choose. Let's stay with um, from another world. From another world. Okay. A whole um, new world. The, from another world. Okay. So this is kind of um, oldie worldy. Filmed in New Zealand. There's about twelve Lord of, of the them. Rings. Oh, actually, no, it's not. It's a very, it's very, it's a, it's a spin-off. It's about the little people with the big feet that have hair on them. It's about the little people. The little, the little, the little people. Little people. You mean hobbits? Yes. Is it the Hobbit? It is the Hobbit. So you can say Lord of the Rings for the Hobbit because it's the same, it's the same books. I know, but the, the Hobbit is a different film. Okay. We said there was 12 of them. That's just my estimate. Seems like there's 12 of them. Okay. I've never watched any. Um, no, so, what would you like to go for next? Not for kids, remix and reboots, or heartwarmers? Uh, remixes, please. Remi remakes. Remakes and reboots. Yeah, but okay. whatever. Okay, this is based on a Roald Dahl um, book, but a very, very large gentleman. But he's very nice, very nice, very happy. Kind to children and animals. Um, there's a, the, I think it was a cartoon, animated, and then I think they did a live action one. Okay. It has, it's got three letters. UFO. No. That would be. <laughs> three letters. No, the, 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 <laughs> what it would stand for, UFO, the unfortunate. Unidentified flying object. Is yeah, well, what UFO yes. stands yeah. for. Yeah. 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 But it's not. Okay, so it's not UFO. No. Lon. Um, no. No idea. No idea. The BFG. Ah, oh, BFG. The big friendly giant. Yeah. Mmm. The. <laughs> not the big gay. We can't say that word. Anymore. No, we can't. So we please can't stop say it. saying it. Stop saying it. Um. So so you've got either your choices are heart warmers. Or not for kids. Heartwarmers, please. Heartwarmers. Oh, okay. So this again is an animated one. Lots of talking animals. Animals of farthing wood. No, it's a more recent one, and um, it's about. So the funny bit in it is where there's a sloth, and they go to talk to the sloth because it works in a bank, <laughs> and it's like, and they're telling a joke, and it goes. Um, and I think there's rabbits that are detectives. Okay. And and take care. Watership down. That's not it. That was a very traumatizing film from my childhood. 
Um, <laughs> this is more more recent, more modern. Why are you laughing? You were at? 15 when that movie came I out. I was well, still had still had feelings, Mike. Still had emotions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm, no. So it's animals talking. Oh, is it the one with them um, King Julian in it? I like to move it, move it. I like to. No, it's not that one. No, I... it's like they're in they're in like another dimension, like another reality where animals can talk. But, but do, <laughs> <laughs> but do human things. But they're animals. I, I, I'm going to give up on that one because that makes no sense to me. Zootropolis. Oh, I've not seen it. Okay. Looked a bit poop. Looks a bit poop. Yeah, I remember seeing it in the cinema. All no, no, no. oh, right, okay. Right, so the last one left on this this particular round mm -hmm. is not for kids. Okay. Okay, so this again, I think there's about seven of these, and set in America. Debbie does Dallas. No, no, none of none of the Debbies. <laughs> none um, of the Debbies. Derek does <laughs> Dallas then. None of the Debbies. Um, um, so, time in America where one day a year. You're allowed to, to do whatever you want. So you're allowed to like rob and kill people and not take your library books back. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that. Rob, kill people <laughs> and not take your library books like back. Like really they're, naughty things. They're the really bad naughty things. Really, aren't they? really naughty things. Um, not paying the fine of 7p when you don't take it back on the Yeah, all those, all those things that are not good. <laughs> um, not pet match your socks together when they come out of the dryer. All oh, those that, hideous, evil things. And they're allowed. Well, I always wear odd socks. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, Maybe to you. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. in the position. Um, there'll be people watching <laughs> this and going, oh, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think his trousers are on. <laughs> well, yawning. Any idea? Um, no. It's something that you do quite regularly. There's a film called Felching. <laughs> if only. <laughs> The Great Rim Project? I don't know. No, it's called The Purge. Yeah, it's enough for that now. So, stick around, because after this break, it's time for Lee to teach us all a way of making life that little bit more glam as we create something in Crafty Queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now, if you remember Art Attack, well, lower your expectations, as that's really nowhere near as good as what we do. Um, we do try, though. It's Crafty Queens. I'm more of a Tony Hart heartbeat generation. That's saying more about you than it is about anybody else. Mm, OK. Mike. Yes. We are deep. In Pride season. We are deep in Pride season. I like being deep in Pride season. You do, don't you? So today our crafty queen is we're gonna we're gonna do something a bit bit pride related. Good. We're gonna make a pride themed whirly gig. Who knew one of those things existed? A whirly gig. So okay. before you on the very table you uh -huh. have a, an arrangement of accoutrement. I do. Um, so what I would like you to 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 to, to get first is um, the little, one of the little wheels. I have a wheel. Okay, now, this needs to be glued onto some card. So, don't use the hot glue gun, because it's very, 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 very burny. Um, just with your Pritt stick, glue, glue stick. that onto a piece of card that I have provided you with. Okay. And um, glue it on. Make sure it's nice and flat. Glue it on. <laughs> and then cut round it. <laughs> right, so I'm, put, I'm cutting round this, yeah? Yes. Okay. Once it's glued on, just cut round it. So once you have, you... have you cut that out? I'm cutting it out now. Come on, slowpoke. Craft is a fast thing. Right, done. All right, Granny, we're ready for the next bit. Great. So I, I have provided you with um, 16 uh -huh. little... Cotton buds that, well, I chopped them in half, so eight chopped in half, so there's 16 segments. Okay. If you're watching in America, these are called Q tips. Cultural. Um, what I would like you to do is put a little bit of hot glue mm -hmm. on the bottom of each of the Q tips, cotton buds, and uh -huh. stick them onto the reverse of your um, 
first pride circle. Go like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, you go all the way around. Do, do, you, use, do you use cotton buds, Mike? Um, not really. I don't have a baby, so... You don't you just use them for babies. What, what do you use them for, then, Lee? You can use them for clean your ears, although it's not no, recommended. Not <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it says on the box, do not use these in your ears. What do you use them for, then? So they're designed to help you clean a baby's nose. Ugh. I think um, you, la la people, not just ladies, but people use them to apply makeup. Yeah. Or remove makeup. Or remove makeup. Or, um, you know, if you if you if you think you have a a, a a a little problem down below and you have to go and see the nurse, she may stick one up your willy. No. 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 Do they not do? You were expert at this, clearly. What do they not do that anymore? They do that if you have a risk of an infection. So if you if you went and said, I think I've got um, a, an infection that's causing a discharge, they may do that test as well as a urine swab. Okay. Um, but they don't use cotton wool buds. What do they use, Mike? They use a sounding rod. They don't use a sounding <laughs> rod either. Um, they just, it's its like a cotton bud. Do they not use, like, um... It's not as thick as that. It's very, very thin. Like something you use to, to wash your dishes with? Like well, a dish? Well, for, for me, they, they use a rolled up duvet. But... Clearly. That's, that's just because it's me. I'm feeling you might not need all of the, um... I have a feeling I might need 12 in total, but... Yeah. I don't think I need all of them. No. But it's good to be prepared. Exactly. It is, yeah. I I'm glad that you've used the paper um, cotton wool buds so that they're biodegradable. I mean, obviously, this will live forever in the... In the Minds of people. Objects of, of beauty. Yeah. Nightmares, yeah. So you've done that? Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to, to get your glue stick out again and glue the opposite... Um, little rainbow wheel mm -hmm. onto the back. So onto the thing I've just used hot glue to stick together. Yeah. Do, do, do. We, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly matched. I wouldn't use the hot glue to glue that on because because it, it, hot glue is hot. It has a tendency to, to burn on skin. I've used hot glue and it's been fine. Oh, okay. Well, well done, you. Um, so now we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit of colour to these little Q-tips. You're gonna you've you've got a selection of um, highlighters, uh -huh. and and all you're gonna do is colour the cottony bit at uh, cotton end Just of it. The tip. Just the tip, but you want to do it both sides, so it is all coloured. Oh, I've coloured the wrong one. Never mind. You've coloured the wrong one. So very absorbent. Mm -hmm. So they soak up the ink quite quickly. That's good. Ooh, what a vibrant colour this yellow is. Do, do, this do, is do. taking too long. That sped everything up a little bit. Oh. Right, I'm done. Okay, so now we're going to create a little bit of a frame. So I have provided you with some little sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once one stick, yeah. and then chop a little bit of length off um, one of your other sticks. Not too much, because this is going to go through the um, whirly gig thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue the little bit to the top of the big bit. Okay, and then I just stick it together, yeah? Yeah, so you've got like a little, little like a hee hee. <laughs> like a hee. That is, <laughs> that's the technical term for this. Okay. And then when you've done that, just pop it to one side for a second. Right. Done that? Okay, so now back to your little whirly gig rainbow thing. Uh huh. With your scissors, go very, very careful. Uh huh. Gonna make a little hole in the middle. Okay. Probably would have been easy to do that before we stuck it all together. To be well, because you needed you needed to have them all three layers and kind of twizzle it round a little bit. Yeah, it's got a hole. 
And you have a little straw, a little bit of a straw. Uh -huh. Stick that through. You don't need to use all the straw. Just kind of, just so it's like, I'm going to say a conduit. I don't know what it means, but I like the like the sound of it. Okay, I have. You've I done have, that. I have tubey looking. Yeah. Put it through the middle. Yep. Okay. Then take your little wooden hee hee hee, uh -huh. and that sticky bit goes through the middle of the straw. Okay. Oh my god, I can't believe this is actually working. And then take your other bit of long stick. Uh huh. And glue that to the other side. Oh no! Don't do this. I'm just going to put a bit more glue on. Yeah, I'm going to have to put some more glue on here. <laughs> just a little bit more, Eddie. A little bit more. A little bit more burning hot. Oh, you minge. Oh, stop it. It did it very quickly on the YouTube tutorial that I watched. You watched the YouTube tutorial? I actually watched this, right. yeah. I have provided you with a little pot uh -huh. that has some um, adhesive putty in it. Sorry. Hot glue going on the floor, sorry. Yeah, so I'll just pop it in the, the thing. Yeah, and then you should be able to spin it. Oh no, or you might need to chop a little bit of your wood off. Is it gonna, is it gonna stand up? <gasps> I'm gonna glue that as well. Oh no, I'm gonna fall to pieces. It's just um, falling to pieces? Yeah, it's falling to pieces. What should happen is, is that when it's all dry, yeah. You'll be able to spin it round. Woo! Right. Well, it kind of, right, if I hold it. It doesn't work. No, you're not, you don't. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, look, mine works. After a fashion. <sighs> right, so, so I don't blow it. How do I get it to move? With your fingers. What? What are you doing? It's falling ah, to pieces. Sellotape boy. So I don't even get to like leave it in the wind to, to do it itself. I have to actually move it. It's like a desk toy. You put it on your desk and then you just spin it. So remember, if you can't get yourself any peen or any vagine, why not be a crafty queen? Choices have been made there, Lee. Mine is, is standing. Look. Do, 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 do. See, it, should, it should be a blowy thing. I kind of. There's nothing happening there. That's the most exciting thing about it. It's flubber. Flubber? Yeah. That's trademarked. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's slime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's flubber. Mm. Mm hmm. Well, if, what? Why does it smell jizzy? Can I smell it? <laughs> Why did you get excited by the fact that I just didn't know if it were... Is that what jizz smells like? Do you, is that what you guzzle down? Does it smell like that? <laughs> okay. Well... I don't know what <laughs> jizz tastes like. It just smells like honey and pineapples. Um... <laughs> Dog fur. <laughs> That's almost the end of the show for this week. Remember that you can follow us on our social media at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching. I will see you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.